Regenerative medicine is where we use the body's own tissues to heal itself. And what I mean by own tissues is primarily we use your, your body's platelets, the platelets being the particles in your bloodstream that if you cut yourself, not only do they stop the bleeding, but they help the tissue heal. When we concentrate platelets, that's what we call PRP or platelet-rich plasma. The other body tissue that we use are stem cells. Stem cells are your body's repair cells. They work every day to repair normal tissue damage. We use stem cells primarily to stop or arrest the progress of osteoarthritis that a person may have in their joints. What type of injuries and orthopedic problems can you treat with the orthobiologics? Typically, we can pretty much treat anything that occurs in orthopedics. Most commonly what we do is we treat injuries to the tendons, be it the rotator cuff in the shoulder, tendons in the elbow, tendons in the knee, tendons on the side of the hip. The job of a tendon is to attach a muscle to a bone. Now a tendon doesn't have a very good blood supply and because of that it tends to break down and not function well and build up scar tissue. The medical term for scar tissue is called tendinosis and we use PRP to help the body digest some of that scar tissue or tendinosis and replace it with healthy tissue and also help restore a blood supply to that tissue so it once again functions normally. The other entity that we treat quite frequently in orthopedics is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is the loss of cartilage on the end of the bone. That is caused by wear and tear, it can be caused by trauma, but the process usually progresses because the joint is making a lot of protein enzymes and molecules that cause the tissue to break down, cause pain, and cause inflammation. And what these orthobiologic treatments do is they stop the production of those substances, clean up the mess that's been made inside the joint, and gets the joint working the way it did before. Do Regenex treatments regrow cartilage in arthritic joints? Absolutely not. Now there's a misnomer out there um, if you go on online or you get ads at home via the newspaper or flyers in the mail, you'll see that these treatments tout that they regrow cartilage on the end of the bone. They do not do that. That's false information. It's a misnomer. Generally what these treatments do, for instance, if you have osteoarthritis in your knee, okay, um, it can stop the process of osteoarthritis in the joint from going any further. It can get the joint working the way it did before. It can help relieve pain, restore function, meaning doing the things that you want to do activity-wise, and oftentimes keep you from getting a joint replacement. What separates Regenex treatments from other orthobiological treatments available? Well, what's different about Regenex, and again, I, I've been doing this since 2007. We did our first PRP here at Beacon about 13 years ago. And for the first four or five years that I did it, um, you know, patients come in and some tell you they're doing better, others aren't, okay? One of the reasons I switched over to Regenix a number of years ago is that Regenix tracks the outcome of every patient across the country that gets treated. And that's very important to track outcomes because there's people out there that says this treatment is the best thing since sliced bread. Other folks say it's snake oil. And unless you track that data, you don't know who you're helping, you don't know who it's working for, you don't know who it's not helping, and you're also learning who may be a candidate to get this treatment or who may not be. So collecting that data, and right now there's almost 30,000 patients in the database that have gotten these treatments. So when you come in for a treatment, I can say you're a good candidate, no, you need an operation, or this, this, this has a very good chance of working well for you. The other reason is that at Regenix we have full-time scientists, okay, that are doing the bench work in the lab that are giving us the latest information at clinic, in, in the clinic of how we can help treat our patients. That's key as well. The third reason is that not all these products are created equally. In other words, I would use a different PRP if you strained a muscle in your calf versus putting PRP in your joint for osteoarthritis versus using PRP for a tendon injury in your rotator cuff because what P, the PRP that may work in your shoulder would not help your knee at all and vice versa. So in our lab, we have the ability to customize the treatment not only for each patient, 
but for what body part we're treating in the patient. What qualifies a person to be a good candidate for Regenex? Well, that, that's a very good question, and, and, and that goes back to having the database, okay? You know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell a patient, you know, you're going to work here, you're going to, you know, this is going to work great for you, you're going to go run a marathon tomorrow. What we look at is, an over, you know, the overall condition of the body part being treated. For instance, if a rotator cuff tendon is torn off the bone, this treatment's not going to help them, they need an operation, okay? If the rotator cuff has some small tears in it where it's not pulled off the bone, the data shows this has a great chance of helping them. Okay? Same way if someone has osteoarthritis. We know that different parts in the knee can get arthritis in them. So let's say, for example, if you get arthritis on the inside part of your knee, or what we call the medial compartment, that responds very well to these orthobiologic treatments. On the other hand, if you have just a moderate amount of osteoarthritis in the lateral or the outside compartment of your knee, the treatment doesn't work very well. So we look at you know, the type of injury the patient has, the severity of the injury, um, is do they have arthritis in this joint because it, let's say they, they, they had a, a surgery on it a year ago, or do they have arthritis in every joint because it's genetic? If it's the latter, the treatment doesn't work very well. We also look at other medical problems a patient may have. If they're a cigarette smoker, if they're a diabetic, they may not respond as well. We look at the age of the patient. That, that is a factor as well. And we look at, is this, you know, is this someone that's coming in here because they want to get better? Or is this someone that's just coming in here saying, stick a needle in me, um, I don't want to do any therapy, I don't want to lose any weight, I want a quick fix. It's not that. What are some of the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis usually shows itself by a number of different symptoms. Joint stiffness. It doesn't move the way it used to, or when you try to move it, it hurts. When you first get up in the morning, or you've been sitting for a while, the joint feels stiff, and then after you start moving a while, it starts to feel better. Sometimes an arthritic joint will swell. An arthritic joint may feel weak, and a reason that our arthritic joint starts to feel weak because if it hurts, you use it a lot less. And then the muscle starts to shrink or atrophy. Now the muscle can't support the body weight because it's not being used, and that makes the arthritic joint hurt more, so it becomes unstable where you feel like you may fall down or it's going to give out on you. How can orthobiologics prevent surgery? That depends on the patient, and it depends on their condition. For instance, early osteoarthritis responds very well to these treatments. And if you're able to stop or arrest the osteoarthritis from progressing further, you might never need to get a joint replacement. On the other hand, if somebody comes in and their knee doesn't straighten out or their hip doesn't allow them to put their socks and shoes on, that's when the arthritis has progressed too far where you would need a joint replacement. For tendon injuries, uh, oftentimes if the tendon um, is still functioning normally, meaning the majority of it is, is still attached to the bone and the muscle that it's attaching hasn't shrunk or atrophied, oftentimes it can prevent surgery on tendons. We used to do a lot more surgery, for instance, on people that had problems with tennis elbow. Since we've been doing these treatments, the, the number of people getting surgery for tennis elbow or plantar fasciitis or problems with their Achilles tendon or their rotator cuff has decreased because it's been able to help a lot of patients with these conditions. What would you say to someone who is on the fence about trying this newer type of medicine? What I would say to any patient, whether it's in orthopedics, whether it's in cardiology, whether it's in gastroenterology, when you have an issue that's bothering you where you don't feel right or something hurts, you're always better off getting it looked at sooner than later because the sooner you get a problem taken care of, okay, number one, the easier it is to treat that problem, okay, number two, the sooner you're going to get better, okay. What makes orthobiologics different, for instance, let's say surgery? With orthobiologics, you're not burning any bridges. And what I mean by that, it's your body's own tissue. So you don't have to worry about tissue rejection. You don't have to worry about tissue allergy. 
we're working with platelets. Platelets are Mother Nature's antibiotics. And what I mean by that, if you fall down and skin your knee, 99 times out of 100, you're not gonna need to take an antibiotic because platelets help prevent infection, okay? We do everything under sterile technique, but again, working with your body's own tissue, this being a non-drug treatment, oftentimes uh, it can be a treatment that can prevent you from getting a surgery later on down the road. When did you start Regenex treatments and how have you seen it evolve? Uh, our first treatment I, I did here back in 2007 and, and the, the evolution of this has been just exponential. I mean, we are learning new things every day, okay? These treatments continue to get better and they will continue to do so. So in answer to your question, when someone's on the fence about getting this treatment, you know, if your knee starts hurting you when you're in your 40s, don't blow it off till you're 65 because then the horse is out of the barn because by then you've probably got a lot of corticosteroid injections. You may have had a quote, clean out procedure, both of which aren't very effective and can actually speed up the rate at which osteoarthritis progresses. But um, as a general rule of thumb in any field of medicine, the sooner you get a problem taken care of, the less problems you're gonna have within the long run, the sooner you're gonna get back to being the active person that you wanna be. If you're having pain for any reason that lasts more than a few weeks, you need to get it looked at before it becomes a big problem, okay? You know, your, your issue may be something that can be treated very simply with physical therapy and rest. It may be a problem that definitely needs an operation it may be a problem that would have an excellent response to orthobiologics where you can avoid getting an operation. But don't let things go too long. If you have any problems with your muscles, tendon, ligaments, or joints, come see us here at Beacon Orthopedics because we will do our best to take care of you and provide you with the latest state-of-the-art techniques, whether it's surgical or non-surgical.